do, 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 do. Okay, talking to myself for a bit, but that's fine. I expect that. Hey, Verdi, Andy, how's it going? How's it going, guys? I thought um, as I was just um, playing around with some design work, that I would just start a stream just in case there's anyone interested in watching how it's done. It's sort of a work project. Um, interesting enough, by the way, I found, if you can see here, an early version. I know it's all taped up because it was actually being used by somebody as a, as a data logger. You can see the probes here. Uh, one of the early versions of the booby. This is the left. This one here, with the tape on it. That's the original booby model a and then that's the booby board i think model c the one which we're using now for all the joystick interfaces so there you go uh andy not really i do so many different things on a daily basis i'm as random as my uh channel and i know that verdi always um likes these verdi you've got some of these right do you have you have at least one of these boards correct me if i'm wrong because if you do i can send you a firmware so it'll be compatible with the joystick interface stuff I don't know if you've got Pit Kit um, 3 or Pit Kit 2 or something that you can use to just reprogram it, but if you do, I can send you that joystick firmware that you saw in the video yesterday. Um, so yeah, so Andy, yeah, that's fine. So what I'm doing this is, I, I basically want to route this board, which is to put all the signals down. Um, the auto router is, fight, is, is having a lot of trouble and I'm having a lot of trouble because it's a dense board. Um, look, that's that shows you that I don't have any here, which is the original Booby Cortex boards, which are they were really quite cool boards. Oh, what's this thing? I tell you what, every time I look in my piles of stuff, I keep finding all these random modules. <laughs> I've got to sit down one day. I'm going to do a video of all those random modules, and we're going to put them to some use because some of these are like running Linux and everything on it, and there's just too many of these damn things. Um, so, of course, this is my own uh, type of thing like that. Oh, here we go. I found a booby cortex. A very early one. Look, here we go. It's not even a blue one. So that is a booby cortex. So you can see it there. That's the layout there of that one. So the design on the screen. So you can see the artwork here on the screen is the artwork that went on the back of that, right? So it just shows you that artwork will never fit on the new design. So the new design is absolutely tiny. It will fit in a, a, a 24, um, it will fit in a, a, a DIP 24 uh, package. So that's a 24 pin uh, DIP package on the PCB. The idea is of course, it will need a USB hub on there. If you, these, these are designed for industrial applications. So it will fit on a motherboard that has integrated USB hub. So these things will all speak at USB speed. So it's pretty friggin' good, actually. Um, oh, really, Verdi? So you've got everything. Um, if you've got a booby Cortex, hang on. Which one do you have? Make sure you've got... This is the one that uses the pit kit. That's the booby board. I think you've got one of those. If you've got a booby Cortex, I think you need a different programmer. I think I've got one here. Let me just check. It's an ST uh, microelectronics programmer. It's a different programmer. And look, I've got so many of these OLED screens to use up too. So we'll have to just keep doing loads of projects. And of course, bloody hell, look at this. Do you remember we made some uh, logic uh, analyzer, um, logic tester, booby board logic tester. So it's a booby board, but in the shape of a logic tester probe. So much stuff here. Right, I'm getting distracted though from my main thing. <laughs> USB is unpatriotic. You must do USA. James, how's it going, man? Oh, you have an arm pro? Yeah, oh, awesome, Verdi. You, you're the man. You got everything. I tell you what, the ST stuff is really powerful but tricky, right? Anyway. Getting distracted with myself. The one thing, by the way, that makes the ST stuff really interesting, though, is how you can just reconfigure so many of the IOs, right, for TX and RX lines. So let's hide the top stuff. 
again for a bit. I just want to see where we are with this. So the problem is we have is we've got to get so many signals across from like this side. Let's try some here. So we've got this canal. Well, that's not too bad. That one we could uh, live with. But then we also got the CAN bus high line, which is come in here. So I think what we need to do is flip it when it comes to here. So we jump over to top layer. And then what I'll do is I'll run it. It's nice to run these. They're differential signals, so they should kind of run together if you can. Okay, like that. And I'm going to run it. Boom, look at that. So that's that one done. Oh, you wrote an art artos for that. That's nice. So Verdi, I should be um, coming to you for, for advice on that guy because I haven't really... Um, I haven't done anything with it yet. I've, I was still firmly kind of pick in my head, so I need to just adjust the way my brain works so I can start thinking about it properly. So we're going to try taking this over to here. These, these signals could probably be a bit thinner, to be honest with you. They are massive. What's this one? This is a 3B3, is it? Let's leave that off. So I'm just trying to pick these these outliers here because we might be able to actually just get an auto route to run once we've got the the main bits going. But you can see this board so tight. I'm not even sure how much of a ground plane and stuff we're going to be able to fit in on it when we're done. <laughs> see, that's close, right? There we go. Yeah, that's not too bad. How many layers do I have? I'm only doing dual layer. Sienna, if I got that right, Sienna, that's uh, I'm just doing two layers. Hey, uh, Andrew, how's it going? Long time no see. Oh, and Mr. Hello. Dalton, hello. I'm sat in a hotel room. Are you furiously yes. trying to distract yourself? That's right, that's furiously. Right. I'm, just, I'm just waiting for the man to come to go through my knicker drawer. <laughs> um, Andrew's referring to anybody who's listening on the stream. Um, that's Mr. Dalton. He's referring to some adverts on Craigslist uh, because I put in the Discord channel a little bit of a Craigslist competition and uh, there was a man offering to just go through your wife's knicker What was it? It was to literally go through your wife's knicker drawer. It was. I what? don't know whether or not he was going to critique them or fold them or, or what he was <laughs> I'm not sure what the person who who shares the knicker drawer gets out of the the whole deal. That was my my main query. Well, exactly, exactly. But we did find a very reasonable builder, didn't we? Uh, what was the builder? What did he want then? It was again some similar arrangement. He's a he's a 37 year old general builder. He has over 20 years experience. He's a bricklayer by trade, but he also lay patios, plaster, tile, and paint, all types of groundwork and general handyman duties. He works to a high standard. And all he asks in return is a piece of underwear from your wife, girlfriend, or sister. Just one piece? Yes. Well, I mean, that's really reasonable, isn't it? I mean... That is. If anything, there's always pants to throw away, to be honest with you. Or just exactly, get exactly. I mean, you could have your patio done for a pair of dirty old knickers. <laughs> is there, there's a, there might be an exchange rate. You'd have to figure out what that rate is. Is It might, might be a pair of pants per square metre or something. <laughs> P PPM PPM, pants per metre Andrew says he's got a whole house here to sort out here, he might give him a call he's in, Cam <laughs> he's in Cambridge, so I mean that's quite a reasonable rate for that area Do you think that Stephen Hawking's would have used him? Oh, I'm sure, without a doubt without a doubt Because he was a clever guy, he would know a good deal if ever there was one Ex Exactly, he's like maybe got some kind of you know discount as well Oh, for um, his disability. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we got a lot of people in the old chair chat today. Let's have a look. I thought I was being smart by laying out a diagonal uh, chip here, but I'm not sure that works out for me. If you remember anybody watching, again, the original Booby Cortex had that, so we were just going with that same layout. But again, it only had pins on one side to match the pin out of the booby board so horses for courses 
<laughs> Birdie says diagonal chips look rad. I think you're right. I'm just trying to rotate it. So you see all these little trailing lines off this. I'm trying to rotate it to see which give me the fewer things crossed over onto each other, but you don't you can't really win. I think that's a problem I've got right now. So I think that's more or less where I had it. It'll have to be diagonal, yeah. But what I think um, Cian, um, Sienna is I would have to probably take the whole board and change the pinouts if, if I'm going to be smart with this. Because look at this, all of these um, analog lines, if I can find them, they're all going to the far side of the board. You see there, that's a far side, that's a far side, that's a far side, that's a far side. And then the, what's that one? All of the SCSI thing, uh, SCSI, spy things are going to the other side. So let's swap the address lines for the analogs and the spy stuff around. In fact, all the spy stuff. Unless you put the chip on the back, perhaps. Hmm. <laughs> so Kevin, how about we do a, a 10 degree? Hey, Baza. I I am a little bit jet lagged, but the best thing is to keep going, isn't it? Push through. Push through. That's so, right. At what kind of hotel are you staying at, Andrew? There we are. Sadly, yeah, I can tell you what I mean. It's not my usual standard. I'm I'm in. I as you know, I prefer to stay with your core hotel chain because um, yeah. I collect my points, and if I stay in anything decent, I get a suite upgrade for free, which is very nice. However, I'm in the Ibis in Lincoln City, and unfortunately, it's a little tired. It's the worst Ibis I've ever stayed in. It's got no air conditioning, which doesn't please me. No dear. And, uh, it's just a little bit tired, shall we say. It's, it's in need of a refurbishment. Um, and the broadband is not as fast because normally the other thing about the core hotels is they normally have a really fast broadband in the hotel. And this is a bit, it's all right, but it's not brilliant. It's all right, but it's not great. Yes. Yes. It's not quite. So it's, it's uh, he gets me some points, but you know, normally I don't mind an Ibis if, if there's no Novotel or Sofitel in the home. Um, but this one, this one does have a computer. Hang on, I will take a photo of this and place it in Discord for you. Please do. We all want to see your hotel of shame. Well, I'm not going to take a photo of all the rooms. I'm sat at the desk, and you can see how dated it is. But what was especially? Did you see the pictures of my hotel, Andrew? I always, I always share my twin queen beds with my suitcase. Oh, nice. <laughs> If anything, um, uh, Sienna, I think that these some of these hotels have up to their game <laughs> over the last few years, but I think it's because there's so much competition. Yeah, well, I don't think there's much competition in Lincoln, unfortunately. Bang, 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 bang. We're going to yeah. take out those. So what was that? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mosi and Miso. Fighting in the Jojo. Let's see where Mosi and Miso need to go. Oh, they're on the correct side. They really don't there want to we move. Go. I've just taken a photo that proves the age of this room placed it in the consoles gone wild room. Let's have a look at that then. This shows you the age of this room. Ooh, what is that? That's a, a modem plug. Ooh. Yeah, for read what it says underneath. For an outside line, dial nine. When modem is connected, telephone line will be engaged. Well, On the computer go. socket. <laughs> the computer socket. Ooh. Yes. That's very swish. Hey, Castardo. Castardo, mm. we've been waiting for you to, to lay out my circuits for me. There is something I want to get to, actually, to show you guys, because I actually do have an Atari ST PCP project as well, but I kind of felt I ought to get Ooh. this horrible Ooh. one out of the way. I'll just check the biscuits. We might be in luck here. Is it real biscuits or is it biscottis? No, they're bourbons. I've noticed a disturbing trend in, in a lot of biscottis. They're bourbons, but one is crushed. Well, that's that's not too bad, is it? Well, it's three, but one is in absolute dust. 
Uh, what is your your sort of favourite kind of travelling biscuit? Well, I tell you what, the Marriott have these lovely kind of like a coconut oat biscuit. Mm. Coconut oat cherry. It's very nice. Mm. Pop quiz. You mentioned it. Nina Cherry. Name a name a track from Nina Cherry. Man Child. Ooh, Man Child. Buffalo Stunts. Okay, here's a question to the chat then. What's your favourite travelling biscuit? Or just biscuit in general? Well, I'm going to say my one. I think I do. If it's a travel one, mm. because then there's no holds barred on a travel biscuit, it might be a hobnob. A hobnob. Okay, but what about a, what about a biscuit you might get in your room in the hotel? Uh, They're not going to leave you a hobnob. I quite like a uh, coffee biscuit. But what are they called? Do you know the ones I'm talking about? They're, um, a, they're a quite a sugary biscuit, and then they're baked. I think so it's a very dark oh, kind of what's that like rombouts, not, a rombouts biscuit. Oh. Bourbons from Floating Fat Man. Well, these are our bourbons I have here. George Harrison was my favourite travelling biscuit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Handle him with care. Oh, yeah, I did notice something, by the way. When I've been reviewing my um, streams and video that I occasionally use this PC setup to record, because I'm using this um, particular mic, it mm -hmm. sounds very um, unnatural because it's like a yeah, stream, that... whereas this mic sounds real. So when I have it, if I make a real recording, a stream is OK. But if it's like a real recording and I sit at the desk, I have to remember to use the other mic because it's really jarring when you switch between the you know, the camera um, setup and then the, the streaming setup. <laughs> I'd love well, to, I'd love to, I'd love that if someone could have brought a Dreamcast to the hotel and then firing it up on the internet. There yeah, was... we've got to go with your computer socket. <laughs> and what you know, you should do, Andrew. You should phone them up and say my computer socket's not working. Uh, and what board rate? The woman it who be? checked me in must be in her, at least in her. She's she's in her golden years, shall we say, of working. Right. And yeah. uh, and it confused her when I said. Um, have you got my loyalty card on the booking? And she went, what's that, dear? What's the booking or what's a loyalty card? <laughs> what's the loyalty card? Oh, dear. Andrew, unfortunately, I don't have anything with a phone plug on me to connect to it. I have two laptops, and neither laptop even has a modem in it. It's, I mean, this... It's shocking, yes. isn't it? Well, the, the worst thing was, though, when I came in through, bear in mind, it's not got air conditioning. It is cooling down a bit now. Um some sadistic bastard had left the heat, the electric heater on full. <laughs> Are those windows you can't open at all as well? Yeah, they're two tier. The inner window only opens a fraction, but then the outer windows um, open all the way. But you only have like a fraction to do it. So fortunately, as I have arms like Mr. Tickle, I was able to get my arm through the window and open the two outer windows quite substantially. LAUGHTER Oh, you've got to love Mr. Tickle, though, haven't you? Yeah. Mr. Tickle. One of my favourites, I think. Exactly. That's how it looks. So the TV in the room is a... Oh, it's on a swivel base. It's a Philips TV. Let's have a look. Is it a true hotel? Oh, it's got a hotel TV remote. But let's have a look. Is it really a hotel TV? Do Philips do a special flavour for hotels, do they? I don't know. Some of them have, like, hotel programming and stuff, and you have to reset them. From, you have to hack the TVs in the rooms. Oh. BBC Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. It's quite strange for me coming here, though, because I was born in this city and I lived here for the first 16 years of my life. Oh, right, which is practically an adult. Yes. I'm staying about a mile from where I used to live. Whoa. Have you, have you, did you drive past it to have a look? I did last time I came here. I didn't this time. But last time I came here, I did, and I went for a bit of a drive around some of my old haunts and things. And I tell you what, it seemed very strange. It seemed very strange indeed um, going around, like driving around the estate I used to live on and everything, because the everything seems so much smaller. All oh, right. And also it seems very strange as well, because, of course, don't forget, I couldn't drive when I lived here. Oh, so I see the city from a, from a different perspective. Because I was 16, of course, I couldn't drive. I was always on buses and my bike. It's 
sorry, I'm just I'm just confusing myself a little bit. So I've got SDA, SCL, and NSS to hook up on this thing. Oh, let me turn that down before we have a problem. What is NSS when it's at home? Well, the remote's quite good. Only the channel up button works. The channel down button does nothing. Do you ever wonder what who's been touching those remotes? I do wonder. If those remotes could why, talk. Why I have hand sanitizer with me. What the frig is NSS when it's at home? Oh, this isn't very good at all, this TV. So if you turn the volume down on one channel, when I change the channel, the volume comes back up as soon as you change channel. <laughs> that will cause problems when I'm when I'm going through the, free, the 10 minutes of free adult channels tonight. The babes, babes casts. Babe station, babes. et cetera. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's a risk, isn't it? If uh, I flip between the channels and the volume comes... I think people are back. used to that. They won't mind you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, just for the stream, but does anybody know what um, NSS stands for? Is it part of the whole SDA, SCL, or is it something else? I'm looking at you, Verdi. Don't let me have to bring up a data sheet. Although I suspect I will. What's our chip? An ST... STM32F042C676. Okay. Oh, have you noticed, Andrew, I don't have a green screen behind, green screen behind me? What happened to your green screen? See, it sat on the shelf. Um, cat, cat took to sleeping in it. And oh, then just dear. completely ripped it out of the ceiling. So oh, dear. That's the danger of pussy action. Exactly. Exactly. NSS. Bloody, how many pages is this data sheet? 117. Hope it's searchable. Oh, it's part of the spy bus, is it? Mm. NSS. Spy 1. SSS. Never heard of it. Mm. Okay, what is SPY NSS? The Active Low Slave Select allows support for multiple slave devices. On a... You have to call them client devices now. NSS, not used if NSS is managed by software. Oh. Okay, so I think it's just slave select or something. Okay, so it's part of that spy bus. So that's why I had it grouped here. Um, on the other side, you see, I don't have quite enough pins. That's all I'm slightly concerned by it. Um, let's see where does it actually route to on the board. So it goes off the far side. Yeah, it's definitely hanging out with all those guys. So maybe I can move something else. Uh, and Becky is here. That's the channel down the tray down the drain for tonight. Becky would know what NSS was. Um, so actually, it makes more sense looking at this to. <sighs> got the I squared C, the three I squared C peripherals. Where are they going then? This is all a bit, all a bit fraught. In fact, looking at this as well, what's SWDIO SWCAK? I don't know. I know. I'm just, I'm, I guess it's, I'm doing cardboard cutout. I'm just talking to the world and then I'll educate myself when I slightly remember. Serial wire debugger. Oh, so that's for programming this bloody thing up. I, Andrew, there was always an eagle for free version. Um, just I don't know. This is this is out my wheelhouse, isn't it? Oh, and other Andrew, sorry. That other Andrew Beer, but that's fine. It's it's. This is the problem sometimes. Yeah, always you you 
before Autodesk, and I think even after Autodesk bought it, you're allowed. Oh, I think I've got a treasure trove here. Let me just check. I've, I've got a lot of post has been... Um, Anything good? I think so. Holy crap. Right, so... <laughs> <laughs> this looks dodgy as hell. This is the most dodgiest looking thing I think I could have shown you. Um, but I can show you guys because I know you can't steal it. Um, hang on. It's actually a bit of a nightmare. So look at this. These are... <laughs> can you see what these are? Uh, not caught up yet. These are Amazon vouchers. Ooh! <laughs> look at the wow. look at the size of that stack. Um, twenty. What are, they, 40, what are they for? 60, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 110, 115, did you win? 115 pounds worth of Amazon did, vouchers. Did you win them? Uh, no. Uh, apparently, um, I have, as part of my credit card, a, a point mm -hmm. system, which you used to use for buying wine or travel insurance or whatever shit. And mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize that those points, you have to collect them or they just disappear off like air miles. Yeah. And I was I losing points at a rate of about 50 Amazon, 50 pounds worth of Amazon vouchers per month or something. It was ridiculous. And I oh, caught fine. it just in time. And I said, flip oh. me all those bloody Amazon vouchers. And then that was it. That's, that's over 100 notes. But the problem is it's, you've got to punch them all in individually. You know, like No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Use the Amazon app on your phone. Yeah. And it will use the scanner to scan the number in on them all. Oh, what? You just scratch the claim code and it will yes. scan it off? Yes. And then you can just scan it with your phone. That would be good, wouldn't it? Yes. Um... But you can load them all into your Amazon account. Or I could give them away as magical gifts. For people no, treat treat yourself all right then you, you twisted my arm perhaps uh, you could get some kind of a some kind of uh, uh an enema kit public enema yes public <laughs> enema number one <laughs> how long do these vouchers last because these might be better oh it must be used within 10 years of date of issuance so these might be worth more than their face value in monies or they? are they going to decrease in value because remember Oh, you know, and I also had a massive amount of Amazon vouchers um, in the US accruing, and I used that to buy myself this new upgraded running watch, which I'm not massively happy. I'm happy with it, but it's new and scary and unusual to me, even though it's the same brand. Right, I'm distracting myself, Andrew, from the, the worst thing, which Get is... Back on with your work. Um... I can't remember what we decided, guys. Um, oh, yeah, NSS. We really wanted NSS. NSS, though, should live, surely, with Miso and Mosi. We're getting all confused with our buses here, aren't we? Let me go get the bloody data sheet up again. I'm a menace for closing my tabs. I'll close them instantly and then get lost. Andrew, do you know anyone who calls it data instead of data? Only uh, Dr. Pulaski. Oh, really? Does, it, does she? I didn't know yeah, that. She does. Yes. Oh, someone the other day was referring to data, and I was like, is that if you've read the word, but you've never actually used the word? Like you've read it in a book. But... Right. Oh, but look at this. This is horrible. This is this is not only just spy. It's also got an I squared S interface, which has an audio um, format. And look what it can do! It can do it in full audio. This is too. Oh my gosh! What a chip! What a chip! What a guy! Australians say data. Everybody needs a bosom for a pillow. Everybody needs a bosom. Baz is getting his rim full. That's a job. <laughs> A rim full of Asher on his 45. Is that millimetres? <laughs> oh, 
Right, let's 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 cut the crap and get on to this. Mosey. I'm trying to work out this peripheral bus. Oh, there's so many interfaces on it. I think I just need to go to the chip diagram and I'll just do it from the chip. Oh, here we go. There was one, there was one, there was one. I saw it. It flashed past briefly. Ah. Oh. I'm amazed anybody would let me do this sort of thing for them, to be honest with you. Okay, here we go. What I love about this packaging, the two, you can see here, no mention at all of Spy or any of these things because this chipset is really configurable. So there's me messing around, um, moving pins around, but realistically there's so many multiplexers on here you could actually just swap them because look here see it says spy one spy one spy one so only some of these are hard sets you have you have to use those particular pins but other times you don't right nss I return momentarily no i just need problem. to get something out of my car so let's try to get everybody boys and girls if we're going to play with spy one or spy two that's let's check that out first um now, the reason also I'm, I'm sticking so rigorously to this is because it was a tried and tested previous design. You can see here, we're not even using all of the analog lines on the bloody thing. But this is a Rev 2 from my Rev 1, so I feel I didn't want to change too many things, so I don't have to mess with the software. So our pin 30 and pin 31, and pin 27 and pin 28. 25, 26, 27, 28. So we're using SPY2. See, look, here we go. See, it's got SPY2 NSS, SPY2 SEK, SPY2 MISO, SPY2 MOSI. So those are the ones that would be nice to kind of get together because it's obviously grouping those four. SPY1 gets one free. Oh, that's very good. Very good, mate. Um, So, SCK, Missy Mosi. So the Swack, Swack Clock and Swack de Go Go can go for now. We'll figure out where we're going to put those afterwards. And then we're going to get on it. Get on it like a Scotch bonnet. Unless uh, you want me just to drop this project and we go back to the Atari ST ones, because they're a bit simpler. <laughs> but it's important. It's important to me. You know why? Um, I'll give you a little hint. The Atari ST project is a project, there's one simpler project. Once the simpler project's done, it will allow things like this device to be um, added to the Atari ST cartridge port. So just this one or Wi-Fi devices or maybe a Raspberry Pi or maybe whatever the hell like you know this module is. So it's worth working out because we might reuse this. So we'll give the Atari a boost with the power of an STA, STM Cortex, like an arm. So you'll have an arm on the uh, on the cartridge port for an Atari ST, which would be quite a nice little accelerator. GPIO is nice, but the USB and CAN are important bits. Yeah, so Verdi, we know the, the, those bits are already working. So it's just me trying to hook these up for future projects. Because if you remember the booby, the original booby board, um, I use them so much for everything because they're really useful. But they just they have to you have to bit bash spy and bit bash I squared C. So the STM was a replacement for that. So I wanted to make sure that all of the hardware support was in where we can add it. Anyway, now I know what I'm doing again. Um, we'll, we'll just crack on with it. It's fine. We just got to add the um, NSS here. So we're going to just add NSS on this one. There we go. So that should be uh, Mossy, Miso, Sock, and Nis. That's all the Spy 2 things. So it's four pins uh, all hooked up on that edge of that bus there, which is nice. So you almost have to tick off the ones we've got and the ones we don't. Um, so we have the SCK. So the SW clock and SWDIO. Let's see where they come up. Uh, SW clock. This one. 
that one there and that one there so yeah those should be on the far side and the clock on the higher one so what we'll do um, we'll just make this next one SWDIO SWCLK so we still have the I squared C SDA and SCL to think about where are those boys where are those boys SDA and SCL I mean those those really if they can come in before um, so we've even got USB coming out which is pretty damn sexy guys we might be able to if we shunt all the analogs down on the other side which we can do so we're going to put in ADC 0, analog digital converter 0 to 3 running up the side. And then we'll kill those last two there. So we're going to put USB across over to this side. And we've got boot 0. What pin is boot 0 coming from on our main chip? Boot zero is PF11, and then we're just going to check what's that multiplexed with, because it could be useful for something else as well. Uh, USART2, event out. So it's like an RTS. Just use it as general I.O. What a great chip. So much I.O. So boot P can kind of go anywhere, really. Um, so let's kill boot P for now. And we might opt to fetch it over in a moment so we want USB D plus D minus in fact we can put boot P here boot P did I get that right it didn't complain boot zero divot Boot zero. Okay, so that means we've now cleared off the space on this side for the D plus and the D minus. All the D. Ah, so Verdi, you using the uh, you were using um, a discovery board. So yeah, they will already be expanded out, won't they, for every sort of eventuality. Good. So do you like what I've done here with the B background? We don't really need to double it up like that. We could we could get rid of that. That's again a hangover from booby board day. So we'll have a look. I might clear off some of the V background and V3V3 um, if it means we can get more ADC on. Then I can shunt everything here on the left up um, three. Which is kind of good, kind of sexy. Like my pants. So we've got NSS, SW clock, SWDIO. So we just need an SCL and an SDA. Um, let's see which order to put those in. SCL, SCDA. That's SCL. SDA. Put SCL first, basically, in the list. Hello. No. Hello, Mr. Dalton. SCL. Were you um, at your hotel today or were you there last night? No, I just drove up this afternoon about two o'clock. I was wondering when you started looking at the Craigslist things, you see. Oh, that was, that was at home last night. That was at home. A home that's more of a home activity. Oh, it's, it's filth, so it's well at home in a hotel room. <laughs> I have found a very unusual thing in a hotel these days under the desk. A legacy of testament to the age of this hotel room. Really? What did you find? I found a hotel plug. A, a, a hotel plug? What's a hotel plug when it's at home? It's a three-pin socket. However, the pins are all round. Oh, okay. Like uh, an old light, British light fitting or something. 
Yeah, they have them in a lot of ho- well, they used to have them in a lot of hotels. So to stop people plugging like hair dryers in, in sockets that weren't capable. Mm. Well, that's looking interesting. I think we're nearly there, guys. I'm just checking now. If you need a good eye, I'm going to keep it steady now because we need to check that all of these are hooked up. V background 3v3, yes. Boot zero. ADC 3210. Can high, can low. V background 3v3. SDA, SEL, Clock, Dio, NIS, SCK, MOSI, MISO, MISO. So we should end up with one, one free, basically. And um, I can see here that we've got one disconnected still. NS, N dollars four is not connected. So that's our one missing one. So I I'm, I'm think we're OK to blow this all away now. Let's do that. Very dangerous move, but until we do it, whew, now we commit it. Now we're committed. But every bit of effort spent here is worthwhile in case we get this all sent off and it's wrong. I was very lucky on the first batch of booby cortexes. They were all perfect. So I'd like to keep that going if I can. Oh no, I've turned my grid off. All right, this is this is where you need to be quite careful as well with the pitch. And I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to do a trick here. Let's just go to the circuits schematic. We're going to add on the schematic a uh, Commodore 64 chip, a 6502. Because a 6502 is more or less the footprint we want just a bit longer and then what I'm going to do is add the 6502 footprint right there bang and then I'm going to move this around so what sort of parts cost do you think this board is um Verdi I could check I have probably the bill of materials from the original batch somewhere um But it was relatively expensive, I think, because the ARM chip um, is quite expensive, the Cortex. But, oh, come on, you bugger. The worst thing is, I've got a paid-for version of Eagle. But this isn't it. <laughs> So the worst thing about traveling in the UK on Sunday is you get to the destination city and it's after 4 p.m. Everything is shut. What stuff were you looking for? Well, just any shops to go anywhere, do just, anything. Just to really. kill some time. Yeah, but the problem is, of course, everywhere with the UK's wonderful Sunday trading laws. Except in Scotland, of course. So Verdi, just to answer your question, uh, yeah, I mean, look, everything, the main cost of this, there's only, there's two main cost drivers for this. It's going to be the STM chip right there, right slap bang in the middle. And it's going to be the socket here. If you fit this J3 socket, which you don't have to because it comes out to the pin, but that's this is a screw terminal socket, you know, like the green ones. That'll be an expensive socket. USB is cheap. Oh, you've got a, a 3v3 power regulator there, which is not going to be expensive but the most expensive by far is probably that blue chip underneath here and that's going to be the CAN bus transceiver if you if you want to use these networked you want those CAN bus transceiver chips but these are awesome to network right I mean that's why J3 is there so that you actually have a port that you can just wire straight into if you're using multiples of these and I think CAN is going to uh, give you what half a megabit communication which is probably enough for most things you're going to do with these floating fat man says it's a bit early for the strip bars mr dalton so you might have to wait a little bit for those to open up for you i can assure you this is lincoln there is no such things here what strip bars yes 
Right. Then we find strip, strip bars in Lincoln. So I need to put Mosi and Miso up and NSS on the end. You can see I've, I'm just I'm going to go through and mess around. Now there is a pin swap thing in Eagle. Let's see if we can try it. Um, how do we do this? Gate swap, pin swap. I want to swap this with this. <laughs> okay. That's not necessarily what I wanted to happen, but it's probably doable, usable. And it's not quite what I want because Mosi and Miso will still be wrong, but let's just go with it. Um, I suppose thinking about it, what else could it do, really? I think Miso and Mosi are going to need to be swapped. I'm going to assume they will and just swap those as well. I hope it actually just swaps the things connected to the pins and not the pins themselves around, because that would be mental. The numbering's still the same, so I presume it's not doing that. Right. Oh, look, we've got like this nice little triangle of blueness here. Not sure. I didn't, I didn't think we had anything rooted, to be honest. Right. In the... NSS is basically a chip select. Well, I'm going to run it because it's a peripheral chip select already there because we can reuse that pin for something else anyway, Sienna. Oh, you got... So I'm just going to... I'm not routing it properly, by the way, guys. Don't shout at me. That can go there. That will go there. That will go there. That will go there. What's that one going to? So that one is a bit crap. SCL. SCL and SDA are next to each other, but I think they should come before. Let's shift swallow and splodoo over. So we want to pin swap SDA. SDA with that. Swap that with that. I think that'll do, yeah. Park that there. Pop that there. And I know, again, it's a laborious way of doing it, but Again, if you want to preserve your design from a previous version, you've got to be real careful. You can't, if, if you run a risk relaying everything out, you can. Ah. Right, let's pull that off. Let's just check. I think we're nearly there, though, on this side. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, it all looks like it's coming off sensibly. So if I move the main chip around if i pull, pull the main chip up and then just wiggle it around you'll see those lines see them just stretching off to those io ports that's nice now you see there's no crossing over going on not quite the same for the bottom yet but we'll get to that um it looks to me it'll make sense to swap ADC0 and ADC3, that's for sure. So I'm just going to leave that there for now. ADC0 and ADC3, let's swap those around. Yeah, it does look like a spider designed it, Becky. I'm going to swap two and one around as well, because I just have that gut feeling that... That it's, it's logical... It, you know, layout issue. Like they, they they design these chips to kind of root out. So it's it's more just me. Uh, oh yeah, that's looking nice, isn't it? So the only ones which are really kind of crazy outliers look to me to be the USB ones because they're kind of a bit painful. But I don't think we've really got room to shift those. Unless we want to do our weird old tip with the uh, removing some of the spare power terminals and ground terminals. Let me have a little sip and think about it. So if we remove a 3v3... One of the external 3v3 lines, we could easily fit D plus and D minus here. Or we could just, we could do the gate swap thing, the pin swap. Can you pin swap cross devices? Let's try that. So if I wanted to move D1 to here, 
really doesn't like that. It's a shame though, isn't it? So what we're going to do is just delete that, delete that, and we're going to bring, we can bring, can you bring a wire end over? No. I'm going to bring the USB over to that side. And let's see which would be the nicest to our chip to do. So, Andrew, in your search on Craigslist, what was the going mm -hmm. rate for a pair of um, pants? Because you were... Um, in, in what way? Was there any... Because you said there was peop there were people saying they were going to sell pants or buy pants. So what, uh, what was a pair of pants worth these uh, days? £60. No way. That's insane, isn't it? You'd have expected a lot more, wouldn't you? Well, sorry, a lot less. Because you can buy a lot of pants for £60. Yes. Oh, it's, it's about the going rate. Let's have a look on Craigslist now. Let's have a look on top. So here's a question for the chat. How much would you sell a pair of your dirty pants on Craigslist for? <laughs> And how much would you pay for a dirty pair of pants on Craigslist? I've noticed there's a there's a, a certain design consideration here to really think about as well. We have VBAC coming in, which we're regulating down to three V three, but you have to be careful because on a booby board, yeah, on a booby board, your input voltage can be anything virtually up to thirty volts because it's really heavily regulated down and it's separated by church and state from the USB power so really I feel there should be a diode here we shouldn't be allowing power from the VBAC being pushed up that USB it sits uneasy with me what do we think boys and girls do we want to put a little diode in here I don't like it it smells bad why can't I find diode just type diode. What the hell? How has it not got diode? It's got pants. Oh, it's because I've got um, a random... This little standard libraries aren't running. <laughs> Use. Give me all of the libraries now, you cheeky monkey. There's actually a diode library as well. Right, this is going to take a few moments now to think about it. Not responding. Don't crash now, I didn't save the work. Andrew B says, add the diode. I think you're right, Andrew. If there's nothing worse you can do. If you've got, like this is the spiritual predecessor to this, right, to the Cortex board. So the chances are someone's going to try to use it in the same way. And they're going to be really miffed if you've left off a part that was so easy to add. It could be a tiny one. It doesn't have to be a huge diode. Let's see if we can find a little tiny surface mount thing. Come on now. I want to play shitty shotty. Oh, it's a shitty shock shotty cocky. I don't want a sh sh shocky. A capacity diode. What's a capacity diode? I'm just going through your local Craigslist section, seeing if there's anything interesting. Thank you. Was was anybody at the Henry Box School in the mid 1990s? Hmm. Is it someone looking for somebody? That's how spies communicate, don't they? Leaving things this, in the personal section. This is up your street. There's a man in Hampshire who wants a uh, running buddy in Basingstoke. Do you have to be nude? I love trail running and frequently run around Hampshire or Berkshire, sometimes further afield. Most of my running buddies are female, but as a man, I don't mind either. Would love to run with a like-minded person who doesn't mind getting a bit mucky. LOL. Happy to run distances from 3 to 30 miles slowly. 
Oh, slowly. Why? Why? Um, what? Hang on, I'm, I'm a bit concerned though about something there about the muddy reference. I know, I know. It sounds like they're into some sort of off-piste activities. It could be. Let's see how big. Oh, that diode's oh, huge. I never find a diode footprint that's sensible. I mean, look at that thing. Where's my special digikey ruler? Ow! Becky, Becky says he's a filth wizard. Hello, Ralph. Ralph has joined us. Retro Tech Ralph. And, oh, here we are. Missed connections in Bournemouth. I we saw a guy. In... I've lost my special digikey ruler that's got all the footprints on it. But um, if every, anybody watching um, in the stream, if we all 20 people shout to DigiKey and say, can you send Dr. Andrew another ruler? They might just do it. Bollocks. Right. Ralph, you'll know. Come on. Technolog. Come on, somebody tell me what's a good size footprint for a diode in a in a in a package that you can actually obtain the bloody diode in because that's always the problem. It has to be not just a small one, but one that is actually got a part number in DigiKey or uh, Farnell or anybody. I've noticed that when I watch any of my videos, I've I tried it in the hotel room on the YouTube on the telly because I was just curious, and the DigiKey mm. ad comes up. I wouldn't know. I was curious if it puts ads that I want to see or if it puts ads related to the channel because it really should put ads that the customer would want to see. But I guess without that information, it puts something that it thinks is relevant. So at least it's classifying my videos as electronics videos. Uh, what's well, a 520805? <laughs> yeah, shout that to DigiKey, Becky. Yeah, and 0805, why aren't I seeing these here? Look, see, I'm just not seeing them. But that looks like a pretty small one. O A O five. They just don't have the the kind of standard footprint. Or maybe these are the uh, Met Imperial ones, though. Oh, you bollocks! Replace. Right. Let's do this again. We're going to go to the diode library. We want a shrubbery. Oh, Andrew, I watched a lot of films on the old um, oh, yeah, that's what did you watch? So I want to talk first a bit about that Kevin Hart film with Breaking Bad Guy. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really good. Okay. Where Breaking Bad Guy plays a paraplegic and Kevin yes. Hart is, is he's kind of actually a... Um, See, Anna, I'm just looking for a small diode. I just want to block um, power getting from the um, unregulated power on board into the V-bus of the USB. That's really it. You're, pro you're referring to the film The Upside. The Upside. Also, um, Sienna, if you leave the diode in and you don't supply an external bus current, then the USB itself will power the board. So it's quite a nice addition. I know you're going to get a drop. I prefer that we don't get a massive power drop over it. You know, if USB is 5, 5.1, I'd rather we were near a 5. But it doesn't matter, actually, because we're regulating down to 3v3. So, you know, go for it. Any diode that will fit there in the small package that I can get from DigiKey. Um, I have to say, Andrew, that I think Kevin Hart has come a long way. He certainly has. He certainly has. And he's, he's, he's not an awful actor. Um, the, what I will say about that film was I quite liked it. At least it didn't go quite as predictably at the end as I thought it would. I thought there was really loads of opportunities for it to do exactly what you think it would, right? But it mm -hmm. didn't, and I like that. Because it could yeah. have just done the real cliches. I, I don't want to get into any spoiler of this, but there's, there's if things yes. that happen where um, you kind of expect him to get really pissed off at the guy, mm -hmm. Kevin Hart's character, but he doesn't. Exactly. And, and I'm like, yeah, that's nice. Because it shows you that the, the Walter White guy... Is, is is kind of he's a nice guy as well in it. That's kind of he, he could be an he could be an utter twat, but he's not. Exactly. So it's not. Never had a digikey ad McBeam. Hmm. Try to use an S4 diode, says Technolog with all the D's. 
Um, let's see then. Let's see. Um, let. Uh, how would I find S4? Is it the packaging? It's weird. You see what I mean? Mm. Is it an O4? Shit, Kishoki. No, they're not right. A P three P D three R one computer says no to that search. Well, I'm assuming that that diode looks kind of doable. I'll have one last search and then we'll move on because it's Dio time because the chances are as well once I start putting the bill of materials together I might have to change it anyway if I can't actually find something what's this one let's we could try that one just as easily let's, I'll just put it down as a separate thing right now let's see oh no that's a huge one see that that huge one I think is standard every I say every time I try to put a diode down on surface mount they are big that'd be a monster compared to what we've got down there Node MCU and Arduino clones use it. Okay, hang on, there is a sort of spark fun library on here, I think. That might have it. And just so you know, I don't have it on me because I put it in another room, but there's a really fun thing in a future video coming up. And it plays a Tetris tune. That's the hint. And if you actually follow me on Twitter and Discord, there are some pictures of it. So it's not really that big a challenge. But if any of the 20 people watching are not on Discord or in the uh, on the Twitter, then you might want to just have a look at what's coming up. Oh, wow, look, the SparkFun um, things are really just footprints for their modules. They don't actually have any actual stuff. Right, screw it. I think that diode's going to be good enough. We'll find something to fit, and if we can't, we'll make something fit later. Right, so let me just check now all of the bloody I.O. here to make sure. So we removed a 3v3 in the ground, a 3v3 and a spare. That's why we've got two spares sitting here right now. We can move uh, boot P up to 9 while we're at it. That's fine. And we have two more lines for additional um, additional I.O. So technologic, let's see what you've sent here. SD103 AW Amazon Web Services. I'm going to try various combinations of what you've given me. I'll get rid of the AWS. Yeah, I'm not even getting anything. Even if, what if we just search for 103? Oh, too much stuff. Capacitor, a capacitor. I notice we don't have any capacitors in our design at all, do we? Ah, uh, we got some around the power supply. That's good enough. Oh yeah, no, we've got loads of caps here. Yeah, it's fine. Sort of worried we didn't have any decoupling or coupling caps. I always, I always forget which is which, by the way, which should be coupling and which should be decoupling. Um, so if we're going to do this, let's add the additional two ADC lines while we can. Uh, for for shits and giggles on let's see p pin 14 pin 15 i'll just check that on the data sheet to make sure we can 14 and 15 pa4 pa5 general purpose io and analog digital inputs too so it's all the sexiness and almost uh, quite a lot of nice spy things let's see where we've got we're free up to pin 29, so let's see what's pin 29 and work backwards. There might be other peripherals that are better. Ooh, some USART. We're using 30. Yes, yeah, so we've got 19, 7, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17. 14, 15, 16, and 17. They're all the spy buses, a whole spare spy if we go up from 14, 15, 16, 17. But we've only got the two pins, so... So fifteen pounds for a photo of one foot, twenty-five pounds for a photo of both. Is this um, people's just regular feet? Yes, regular fo feet photos. Oh, 
twenty pounds for a video, you can request a certain nail colour. I would at no extra cost. I will, I will happily paint my toes for that. Yeah, I do take special requests. I also have a pedicure package, price negotiable. Ooh. So you can. I'm just having a little look, see, guys. Sorry, I've got the data sheet off to the side. I should be holding it here. Um, ah. I just wanted to see if there's any additional. See here on the you have on the a column called additional functions on the right. I was just seeing there if there's anything interesting, but I think we're good. If we just hook up the uh, ADC channels as listed, I think we will be good. Um, let's do that and get on with it. Let's and we can move on in our lives. And then we'll have a look at that diode again. All the diode action here. What would you do for fifty pounds, Andrew? Do you have a just a gauge? What do you mean? What would I do? I'd take photos of my feet for fifty pounds. I wouldn't give a monkey's what people are doing with them. Put my hands as well, you know. So again, would you mind them. if they were doing stuff with monkeys with them though? I wouldn't care as long as I wasn't actually the person doing the things. If they, if they don't take a photo of my hands or my feet or whatever, they can yeah go for it. Fifty pound, yeah. Fifty. What about you? Oh yeah, I'd definitely oh, yeah. do that. I think there might be. I'd do more for fifty quid. That's why I'm wondering. Yeah. I think feet are probably the bottom of the barrel, really. I think fifty feet quid. Are, feet are a huge fetish. Oh, they it's really. This whole, this whole subculture, yeah. Feet for fetishists, yeah. Maybe they. Sh we should have a website we could set up where people can send pictures of their feet. And fetishists could pay to rate their feet because people might not know if their feet are worth selling. So it's like an estate agent. Right, okay. Well, here's a question to the chat. We're not judgmental, as you know, in here. Is there anyone, and bear in mind, I will kick anyone from the chat who has a go at anyone. If you have a foot fetish, say in here if you do. <laughs> we, we are we're an open and inclusive office, aren't we, Andrew? I think so. I don't think we would judge. I think I, I, I think I, I was doing a little chuckle because I was thinking I'm not sure people yes. would would say if they. Yeah, but were it's on an that. open, inclusive office, and if people want to say if they have a fetish for feet, please, you know, it'd be interesting to hear, hear your stories. Um, I'm wondering if I've got any pins. You see, I've got two LEDs. I've got an, an RX and a TX LED that are coming all the way from the other side of the board. Let's have a look at our RX and TX LEDs. Oh, um, there we go. Becky has a bit of a foot fetish. There we go, Becky. There we go. It's it's quite a popular thing. It's not something I personally am attracted to myself, but it's this enormous subculture. LED TX and LED RX. Sorry, guys. I'm just I'm I'm distracting myself slightly because I just want to just move. The LEDs from this PB line, if I can, but I need to see what PC13 and PC14 are doing. If I get it wrong, I'll really shoot myself in the arse. Um, and then take photos of it. And then take photos of it. Pins two and three on board. Let's see. So I've got them connected currently to 18 and 19, and I'm thinking I'll try to do it on pins two and three. I can't see any reason why it wouldn't work. Eighteen and nineteen. So eighteen and nineteen are ADC inputs. They're standard I/O and they're standard timer sync source PB. Uh -uh. I'm kind of worried because they're not. I don't know what port C issues there are on this and actually they're only available on certain packages let me have another i have to really think about this they're definitely on this package though so what do you think guys uh, am i shifting these would I risk shifting these two LEDs from pin 18 and 19 here on port C, port B rather, to pins 13 and 14 on port C? I feel, I feel they'll probably be all right. Let's, let's clean up some room here for them if I do go with it. Oops. 
orthogonal. So feet, feet. Kevin's Kevin's got the right thing. I think that's what it is. I don't like ugly feet. Hmm. hmm. Technolog, how do you mean panelize my PCB? Just to make them in panels. I let the I let the um the board maker worry about that detail for me. Uh 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 uh. Sod it, I'm going for it. I'm going to do it. What's the worst that can happen? We can lose a couple of LEDs, which are annoying anyway to fit. Why would you know that? We might not. Ooh, They're kind of used for is, debugging. Go ahead. This is a very interesting one. This isn't uh, adult-related in any kind of fetish way, but listen to this. Amazon product uh, listing reinstatement. Seller at Amazon are suspended due to some or other policy violations. Some of them have a team or connected to a partner who can help them to reinstate their account. No matter what Amazon has suspended you for, the appeal guru can help from any policy violations to performance violations. We know how to masterfully write for your unique issues. There are many suspension type we have successfully reinstated with a ratio of over 95% reinstatement. These suspension types, um, but are not limited to inauthentic products, counterfeit items, intellectual properties, ASIN misuse, or the defect rate, Prohibited items, new solders used, late shipment rate, review manipulation, use item, <laughs> used items sold as new, and all other suspensions. Call us now by uh, visiting our official website at. I'm not going to say the unless you want me to. Not bothered. This is theappealguru.com. Theappealguru.com for all your Amazon scam needs. Handy. Yes. And you're really going to trust their gold star rating on FIFO because it's not going to be manipulated if they specialise in manipulating online reviews. Yeah, you'd want them to always have a really, really high rating. So yeah, late night reviews. This is tech in DE. Have you been doing any late night reviews? Late night reviews? <laughs> This is looking like it's getting to where. Should we for, for a laugh, guys? I'm just going to hit auto route, and don't worry, I, I need to pull it up because we actually do have differential signals on here. But let's just see what it does. Um, and in fact, auto route the first version of this board, and it, it routed the um, differential signals in a crazy way. One like all around the edge of the board, the, the USBs were split, but they all worked fine. These aren't massive distances here. And luckily, there wasn't much noisiness going on. Ah, I've got a comment on a YouTube video, and it says, Hell yeah, knob box. That's yesterday's video about my knob box. So if you would like a look at my knob box, Who head wouldn't? over. Exactly. I like the idea of um, maybe removing this pin from a VBAT and making it a ground. I'm tempted. Wow, look, we get a 94.8% auto route on that. That's not bad, is it? Let's see what, what it would have got wrong then if we were going to fix it. Oh, just a few here. Those friggin' LEDs, always the LEDs. And that's because I, ah, I can fix that. Because I rewrote the rerouted the LEDs, so if I just pop those around the other way, that'll save solve that bit of a problem. So I think I will while I'm at it. So it would really like this LED. I think. God, look at this. There's no routing grid turned on. Like a total amateur. Hmm. It is tricky. It's got it's got a challenge to put root these to be fair. Let's give it a bit of space. Let's give it some space to work. If I do that, it's got plenty of space to work. Get a via in. Now how do you pronounce it in the um chat? I, I pronounce it a via, but a lot of people pronounce it a via. It's a via, mate. And I'd say it's a via. Yeah, I don't like a via. I, I think it's a via. You say via, and I say via. You say liar, and I say... 
I'm running out of uh, fake lyrics. Right, let's get that in. Yeah, that song though, that says like potato, potato, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. No one fucking calls it a potato, <laughs> do they? <laughs> Have you ever called it a potato? Andrew, I would you like some potato salad? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, I love potato. A, I love a potato. <laughs> Said potato no one option. ever. <laughs> would you like to wash my feet? <laughs> Because... Royker, will you wash your feet in potato water? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if if I was in charge of these new this new like Picard thing and all of that going on, it would have to feature some feet washing from Riker. Oh, it would have to have like, right. a whole episode dedicated to Riker washing pikey feet. <laughs> That was such a weird episode. Star Trek at its it's best. It's one of the most complained about episodes. Uh, it's called Up the Long Ladder because it's so full of ethnic stereotypes. I was going to say it is definitely ethnic stereotypes. I wouldn't call it racist because it... it is borderline, though. I don't know because... when is it racism. It's all it's all tongue in cheek fun. But yeah, I guess I guess so. I mean, what do you mean? Do you mean the fact there's an alcoholic, red haired Irishman dressed like a leprechaun who leads the Irish people, and he is a li he's literally called stereotype McGinty. But literally, like, Andrew, I, I am I, I am literally now an Irish citizen. Am, am I not? I've showed, showed you the proof. No, uh, your passport. It's in there. So, um, as an Irishman, I can say I totally agree with this stereotype. Because <laughs> I just I should have a page on Craigslist. Would you like me to legitimise your racial uh, biases? At our uh, the the racist group, we have uh, employees of every ethnic uh, majority and minority um, ready to write a letter of agreement to something you yes. may or may not have said <laughs> or posted on internet. Auto routing kills the stream again. Oh, really? Does it actually knacker the stream when it auto routes? Could be. Oh, look at that though. I think you will agree, boys and girls, that once you do start laying these out, the auto router does have a fair old stab at it now, doesn't it? I mean, it's it actually looks nice. Look at all these unused pins, though. The stream doesn't like the auto routing. Okay, I'll, I'll avoid that now. Or I'll. It's because the auto. Let's see. The auto route is set to eight threads, so it's maxing out the processor. I'll set it to much fewer going forward. Um, all right, I think we're ready to root now. We're ready to root, mate. It's an Australian term, isn't it? Root. It's a bit, yeah. You need a good routing, mate. Oh, I'm almost tempted to swap the ground, though, on the far side. I think I will. Oh, shit. You've got some challenges here. Okay. Bear with me, guys. I'm trying to think how I do this. You're unbelievably tired, Craig. Hmm. Rooting in the back of the oot. Hey, Electron Ash. There you are. You missed all the fun and games. <laughs> you missed all the fun and games, Ash. But more are about to begin. I'm kind of hesitant to put a USB data line on pin 1, though. Mm. But I really would like ground on pin 12 on this thing. So it's uh, kind of on the opposite corner. Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. Let's leave the V bat line there then. Stop designing new boards and finish some of your old ones. Right, let's do some gate swaps. Boom. I'm liking this actually. This pin swap thing is handy, isn't it? So, Andrew, what do we know about the new Star Trek thing at all? Anything, or is it still just... Not a great deal, apart from, uh, what, the Picard the Picard series. Yeah. Yeah, not a great deal, apart from it's set in aftermath of the destruction of the Romulan 
homeworld was involved in the relief efforts and something went wrong. And it's set about 20 years after Next Gen. Oh. Mm. So it's kind of, it's a, it's a real time timeline in a way. Uh, it's, in, I mean. it's, it's in the future from where we we were. Yeah, but it's also been like 20 years since the next gen in real life. Yes, yes. So Picard will have aged proportionally. He will. So McBeam's asking, what are we making here? So McBeam, just a quick refresher. You may have seen in my recent videos about joystick interfaces and lots of gadgets. They always use this, which is a booby board, which is in itself a V3 board. And I did have, oh, I have a V3, a V1 board there, which is interesting. You'll see V1 boards on Hackaday and stuff of booby boards, but this is a V3. And then we decided a while back to upgrade the booby board uh, to a booby cortex. So it would use an arm cortex. And that was a booby board pinout using an ARM Cortex, but I thought I could do better and make this fit in a small chip like a 24 pin dip package. And that's what we have here. And if you see the writing in the top right corner, you can see the silk screen. That's the original silk screen that went on the back of this one. So just to show you how much smaller that new board is, it's imagine you're cutting it, you're cutting this from here. You're just using that side and you're making it even a bit narrower. So we're trying to shoehorn a lot on there. Um, Kind of worrying. I'm noticing a couple of bodge wires on here. Um, there are some bodge wires on this, and I can't remember if those were genuine bodge wires or fixing something I cocked up. Um, bearing in mind, I made quite a large batch of these, and these are still currently in use today in a commercial application. I kind of feel that maybe those bodge wires are me ah those bodge wires are me testing something to give me some extra io because i blew the io on that board and i've since managed to get around that because you'll see here if you want the additional io and you're not using the can bus transceiver the mcp2551 you can use these two solder jumpers here sj1 and sj2 to route the can tx line straight to the can l and the can rx line straight to the can high um, which are giving you some additional I.O. from PBA and PB9. Let's see what those are. 45 and 46. They're giving you some general purpose I.O. And uh, yeah. look at that. You've got an I squared, um, I squared C1 SCL line. And you've got an I squared C SDA line too. So you've got an extra I squared C bus if you want to use that, if you don't want to use CAN. So that's good, isn't it? That's all in all useful. Right, where was I before I was rudely distracted by the internet? Uh, Technolog, probably not. I probably won't open source this one right now because it's, um, well, to be honest with you, you could just make it. <laughs> I mean, um but i generally i kind of want to make sure i i i tend to uh, not open source certain boards certain parts of their life cycle because i like to recoup some dev cost um, but i will you know i can certainly where a board is put together by the like the discord chat and things like that i'll always open source that because it's done as a team but if it's just me and i kind of need to use it for a commercial project I won't open source it right away. Fair enough. Is it fair, Technolog? I think I'm designing it online so you could copy it. Right, so we don't want to do auto routing, do we? We agreed. So we're going to just manually drop in some of these buses. So there's our can high. There's our can high de high. High de high. Also, by the way, this is an onboard USB peripheral, which means, of course, over the original booby design, we don't need the FTDI 232R level transist level shifter. So, although it's way more high tech, it probably will end up costing about the same, which, which is nice. Okay, let's get that can in there going on. And then what we're going to do, ugh, we're going to drop ourselves onto the top layer of the board. 
and I'm doing something to piss Ash off by turning off my routing grid and going full. I'm going full manual. They say you shouldn't go the full manual. Andrew, you've turned off your routing grid. Is everything okay? <laughs> yeah, and I made such a lame mistake there. I can't believe I was trying to, <laughs> trying to hook that on. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Verdi's doing that right now as we speak. He's taking a screenshot and he's superimposing le uh, eagle onto it. <laughs> That's the problem. You know what, Verdi? I'm always hesitant when I get those free things. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to put it for free on your JLPCP because I don't trust you not to do that. And I don't mean you, Verdi. I mean, like, those... They, ha they actually have those... Um, things where they do that they'll like give you some free pcb credit um in exchange for them posting your board on their like web page which is kind of horrible well unless i suppose you might have it on thingiverse and in that case you probably won't care <laughs> electron ash i i um I uh, like Angie says I go for this full uh, Jedi Force use on mine. I I really um, I don't mind. I don't think you see when you're laying out the tracks right. As long as you're electrically consistent, there's no there's no milling or anything going on with your tracks. They're laser. They're uh, optically uh, etched right. I think you want to keep on grid when you're using holes and stuff because it's nicer to the machinery and it's quicker for them to route them. But like here where I've got that three pin uh, device and the rest of the board. I'm not ensuring they're rooted together. I just want to make it fit um, in, the, you know, in the, the physical design. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of I try to be friendly to the PCB companies when I can, but at the same time, who cares nowadays? I'll put loads of wires in and stuff as well. They're free now, aren't they? Doesn't matter. Right. So now this is where it starts to get tricky, guys, and I'll show you why. So we want to get to that SCL, and it's starting to get a tight squeeze we got a lot of pins there so when you're doing this you'd want to flip it onto the other side of the board but now underneath the board we do have um some stupid stuff just hanging out now this is where it might be worthwhile we know that a lot of the io stuff is going to go on on this side of the board we might want to shift then the stuff that's on the uh, bottom of the board over because there's only a couple of lines to the canvas so it makes sense to do that and I'm just going to turn off some of the top stuff so we can see that better, right? So you can see that there. And you can see they're basically the only two signals I'm really concerned about, which are the, can, the differential CAN signals. Um, also, we do have some USB ones, though, to do. We mustn't forget those when we get around to it. So we might as well shift all these to under the, the USB port area right now. And oops, we don't want to delete that. We just want to pop it up. Pop it up, pop it up. Um, and if we want to, just to make sure those can lines are rooted, not on the top, you bugger, on the bottom, um, you just want to do something like, uh, in fact, let me just turn that top off a sec. Oh, wrong thing. Give us a sec, give us a sec, give us a sec, because it's just turned that top back on. Um, I'm looking at these uh, solder jumpers, really. If we flip those, you'll have the two can lines actually really close to each other, which kind of makes more sense. I'm really not thinking you're going to get an issue with noise on a board this size, but we're not going to be able to probably fit a ground plane or anything on this. So let's let's do it that way. Right, so we've got the can high. Um, and you've got the can low, if we can pick it up. Come on now. Give me. Ugh. This is where you want to turn off certain things. You can grab it from here anyway. Um, so the idea of something like this, though, and I'm going to just bite off this corner. There we go. Is that you, you kind of want them within a certain distance. Again, someone like Ash will know. Electron Ash would know what's best for that. But that's close enough for me. I think that would work absolutely fine like that. So that's the main one. We can turn the other layers back on. We'll find where our USB lines are and make sure they're not doing anything too too crazy. They were coming over here. So we've got the D plus, D minus. 
they're going to the port. So they're going to the port and to the um, the pin header on the edge. So we want to check that one. So Technologs talking. Oh, custom grid. So Altium. Yeah, Altium's interesting. Um, I've not tried that yet. Technolog, uh, yeah, PCB GoGo. -Go. There's so many of them, though, right? Um, I, I, I do have um, agreements if I, if I choose to honour them uh, with a lot of the PCB companies for free. They're always harassing me to do them. So I've not found any that I've not liked using. They've all been pretty good. So this is the differential now for the USB. So I'm kind of... Look at that. If I route that that way, though, we're really killing this SWCLK. So it's not helping. Those things we moved around underneath are really not helping from that USB perspective. So I'm going to, again, jump under there again. I should see if there's a way of setting up a profile for this so I can just turn off things that I don't need. So the problem we've got are these jumpers again which that works. We just want to put them that way. Let's get them just here for now. Again, don't worry about the labels. We'll worry about those later. Get your can. Get that going there. Get that going there. This was the USB. Again, we need the top on because the chip's on the top. Ah, cancel that. Almost turned on everything, which can be a mistake because you'll get all the drill lines and stuff, which you don't want. So PCB Way is a sale. What's the PCB Way sale offering right now then? Anything good? Three designs stolen for the price of one. <laughs> Whatever design you need, we've got for you. I think D plus and D minus. So let me just, I'm going to temporarily route this one. I have a, a nasty feeling about something here. Yeah, we're going to have a crossover. We want to do a um, pin swap on D plus and D minus as well. Let's do that. Boom, boom. So have you got a movie lined up for tonight? Andrew. No, I'm going to go. I'm going to disappear in a minute. I'm going to go find some food, uh, see what's available locally, and then I'm just going to watch something on the iPad. I think I might watch. Um, I don't know. I, I think I might be serious. I might watch The History Boys tonight. The History Boys. Mm. Mm. I don't think I've caught caught any History Boys. It's a an Alan Bennett play set in the eighties about. Um, a group of exceptionally gifted kids in school who, well, basically are going to go to on scholarships like to Oxford uh, in, this, in history and their relationships and stuff. It's very, very good. Ooh. I know. It's a bit deep, isn't it? It is for you. Mm. What, you no, no, no tits. Well, there might be. You never know. Because if yeah, it sounds maybe. a bit arty, you might get lucky. Right. Yeah. So I think I'm well and truly going to screw the auto route about what I've just done there, though. That's not yes, Ash that. with Richard Griffiths. That's right, and James Corden. Yes, is Richard Griffiths dead now? He is. He is sadly. He was good though, wasn't he? Do you, he, he always yes. looked the same, didn't he? Forever, he always played yes. some old guy. Because <laughs> do you remember in Whiff Nail and I, he was like. I don't know, 20 or something in that. He was really young, some ridiculous age. Mm. Uncle Monty. That's right. So, Ash, quick question for you. We could probably change the um, pin, uh, the signal trace thickness on this. Most of this is not really very current uh, sensitive. And... We're currently running it with a 0 0.012. Um, we may well. So I'm going to change the auto routing threads down to like three. 
so it shouldn't ruin the stream. So let's see how we, we do with that. So it's evaluating. Well, Mill's fine. There will be burglary. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, that's such a such a funny film. <laughs> Uncle Monty. Look at that though. The um, vias that I place manually are, are way bigger pitch than the ones it's using. The vias. Eight mil trace. So do you reckon eight mil trace all round would be fine? Just leave the um, power to the regulator a bit fatter to give us a bit more headway. Ninety three per cent. So it's having trouble hooking up this three V three line and this boot zero, this boot zero line, which is going via this capacitor, which is just straight to ground. That could be probably just put somewhere else. So Ash, you were saying eight mil traces. So we could just put our grid, because uh, our grid's just put it in mil. Oh, it's in, it was in inches anyway. Um, and to do this, we go to net classes. So power is set to 0.45 millimeters, but we can set this to eight mil. I mean to have you, even if it must be burglary. I don't think it was his nephew that he was going to bugger, though. No, probably not. It was his his his, that, his friend. Friend. Either way, either way, who doesn't enjoy a bit of, a bit of buggery? Don't knock it till you try it. That's right. Right. Um, let's pull this bloody board up again because it, it's kind of. I, I, there's a, a bloody thing on this. If you don't save it in a certain way, you lose it. And you can't undo an auto route if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so let's check the drills while we're here before we make any. Uh, So 13 mils, drills, 13 mils. Let's go for it then. Auto route the whole lot. Differentials be damned. Be nice just to see if it can auto route um, to pretty much 100% without any constraints we put in with the differentials. And then at least we got a chance. I think there probably is a way in Eagle to tell it to, to pair a couple of lines so they don't do anything too silly. Come on now. Those power traces do look like they're taking up a lot of the board though. Ninety-four <laughs> percent. Yeah. So Ash, would you just try to lay this all out by hand? How would you do it though if, if you don't have the auto router at all? Because you know I auto route. I know you don't auto route. So it's a good conversation to um to have. I mean you you can see the layout of the board now. Is there any sort of rule of thumb design rule things you think you, we could do that would make this easier so for example um the layout of some of these things sometimes you get a, a, you can smell it can't you you look at it and you go that's not going to like that because you've not got much room to play with it because you're not going to be able to get room for your vias mate um on that one and then i look at it myself and i kind of think well you've got this ic 
it's not really doing much. It probably could live here, but you'll need that space underneath for the I.O. on this chip. Although the bottom right corner of that's not really got much I.O. hooked up. So you could potentially try to put it on the back here. All right, so you just have to visual it, visualize it and move it around. I mean, sometimes you can just... This is an older design, for example, so I, I don't know what I was thinking. So let's just see. I was obviously thinking something here because all of these 3v3 lines are kind of hooking up. The grounds are an interesting one, though, aren't they? Because if you've got ground plane coming in later, that normally takes care of itself. But let's just hook them up. So that's before you have to drop to a via. That's where that ground's going. Um, what are we looking at component wise here? So that's a power regulator I see, and that's our diode here. Um, we could give ourselves a little bit more room, something like that. If we are really concerned about it, that would let us then maybe root the uh, ground. So, Ash, yes and no with regards to the smallness of the board. Um, I think that um, it, it's not an IC, it's not an EEPROM IC. It's a controller, um, but it's 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 designed to be modular and fit in a standard twenty-four pin. Um, yeah, twenty-four pin. That's a count there uh, footprint. So there's our VBAC coming in from there. I'm just laying out the main ones then. Get the VBAT in there. And this so this diode now you can see requires VBAT, so we could just flip that that way. And then that's gonna be good to go on the next part here. Um uh, Ash, the auto router didn't complete. That's the only reason I'm changing it now. I'm just noticing though, remember we talked about those traces? We said we were going to try 8 mil, didn't we? There you go, that gives us a little bit more. And we're just going to lay out the just the differential signals, really. Oh, no, it was Ash. It wasn't. It was rooted originally on a board that was much bigger. So you can see this is the original size board. You can see by the silk screen there on the top right for the original board. It was a really big board. I say really big. It's still kind of small. But yeah, it's big in comparison. So it's just it's totally compressed down. The whole design is basically just compressed. Um, you can imagine this is designed to live on a like an industrial main board in a in a socket just as you say like a dip i see deeply dippy about the fun we had the do 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 right here we go there's one if you're doing that though you might as well just start off on the bottom with your usb hard to know where you're going to want to want the room so I'll just put it there so USBs are differential so they should run together right let's leave that there right okay that might be auto routable now so I'm going to do an explicit thing as uh, do a save as checkpoint and then I'm going to load up mm, that 
that's the Atari ST project. So remember I said I'm working on another project. That's the Atari ST, Baby Cortex V2. I'm going to load up the non-checkpoint version. Okay. And then we're going to hit the auto route. Hopefully that's going to do something. Go! Haha, <laughs> McBeam, I'm sure you could do it if you needed to. Start. Ooh. So it would be really much easier to use a multi-layer board, but I kind of I kind of like dual layer if I can. 96%. So it's really just a few lines here. Um, I think my USB uh, thing has forced it down a certain route to route the USB all around the board <laughs> back to the port. Um, you know what, guys? I think I'm just going to go for broke and let it just forget those differential lines. I just don't think we're going to have a problem with them anyway. Let's just let it do what it's going to do. Let's let it do what it's going to do. <laughs> but McBeam, if it was your, like your job or something, you'd do it. I'm sure whatever your job is, you can do and nobody can do it. Um, Routing is the fun stuff, really. I think for most people, uh, Ash, don't you think, though, for most people's requirements, if you see a lot of circuits that people do, um, relatively simple stuff, I think you could just manually route everything. I mean, you could manually route this if you've got time. I, I just don't really have that much time, and if it works, it works. Um, if you were getting paid to do this and you had weeks to do it, you would just make sure everything was absolutely perfect because um, the cost of that board failing would cost you or your organization or something money, and that wouldn't be good for it you. It might cost you your job. Cost you your job, exactly. And they'll say, what, oh, you, you ran that, you didn't check this. But for me, um, we sometimes hear about some really uh, interesting uh, issues that people have. I'm just looking here. We've got, uh, so some of these, some of these when the auto router gets confused, you might be able to do manually. So that's a jumper pad down there, if you remember. We have a jumper on the bottom. But I'm seeing the bottom tracks. If we if we just space those jumper blocks down a bit, it could it could actually push all the bottom layers across and it will be able to do that. And let's just check this other one here. This is just a VBAT power line that has to go from one to the other. And because we've we've chosen it to have quite a thick track for that, it's having trouble. So all we need to do is just to change that in the preferences. I think we're nearly done. I think it's going to do it. It might just do it even on this next one with those mods. But some designs you don't even have the luxury of being able to, to move stuff around. It's just so compressed and compact. We're just kind of stuffed, really. Let's try that. And I think, Ash, when you go to BGAs and things, I don't think you, you have to start going on multiple layers. I don't think you really have the luxury then. I mean, how else? You can't break it out at all, can you? It must be nearly impossible. Think how long this auto routing would have taken to run back in the like. 60s or whenever it is they started using auto readers first. God, it's still having trouble somewhere. Come on, where? Is that it? One SDA line up here. This this feedback, it really hates that. And that was the thing I wanted to actually drop from that corner. I wanted to drop that VBAT. Maybe I will just drop it in the design. Let's drop that from the design.
If anything, I think another ground could be useful there instead. We won't break out any more IO right now. I think that's fine. Unless, while we're here, while we're here, while we're here to be sure, um, you see this line here, this little NS1. We actually have a VUSB. There is a USB power. VUSB. So even though we're wrapping it through this diode, right, to stop it um, VBAT powering USB, we are kind of allowing if that diode's there for VBUS to go to VBAT. Um, but we'll drop, we'll drop a vault. Um, might be nice just to have it here. Because you could, for example, put pin 1 across to any of the ADC inputs if you wanted to measure USB voltage for some reason. Let's try it anyway. It might even be possible to do that internally on this chip. Oh yeah, Technolog, what do we say on the diode footprint in the end? This diode, wasn't it? So we're going for an SOD523, but I'm willing to change it. I have to admit, uh, Ash, I tried that for a while, that KiCad, KCAD, however it's pronounced, and I really just couldn't stand it. Um, but it's like most of these things, it takes quite a while to get used to a new one, but for me it just didn't seem worth the effort. I don't think it offered me anything more than Eagle would do. Right, let's see. Well, that diode package, I think it's okay. We can still change the package later. It won't really affect routing too much where it is. Come on now, just hit me with 100% is what I want. Then we can we can work back from that. Go. Wrap your electric brain around that. <laughs> Come on. So Electron Ash, though, do you think that um, it's trying to take that gap where Eagle left off? Because do you remember Eagle was always really good for hobbyists, kind of free and all of that? Um, I kind of feel that's still where they're trying to trying to aim it for. Um, Try to bring those two around. I feel swapping those two around might yield some results for me. Ironically, if we replace some of these with through hole components, it might actually be better on the design. So one of the weird things you're, is having to name the actual nets in the schematic. In LT Mothers, there's only names in the base where the label touch the nets. Oh gosh, what's going on? Lots of things. Lots of tweets happening right now. Come on. Right, I'm going to have to love you and leave you. I'm going to go food and fill my car up in case I finish on my customer's site tomorrow so I don't have to get to fuel before I head home. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, good luck with mm. that. And uh, if we're still around, let us know what you ate. Or All right, I'll speak to you all later. Ta later. Bye bye. Come on now. You can do it.
always failing at the same level here. See, that's that. I think it could do this. I think this is a case of it getting a bit its own knickers in a twist. So let's see if we can help it out. So this, what I've done there is to try to, we've got to try to give it some room so it can put a wire in there. Right. <laughs> so if you were going straight for the can one, it's got a can high here as well. Whoa, hang on a minute. What's this connection? Oh, it's going, that's because the can transceiver's back there. Yeah, that's weird. That's that's causing us problems, isn't it? Look at that can route. I don't think companies like Altium care if you're using a cracked version for personal use, because it's like you wouldn't pay it anyway. For them, it's like free education. So that looks sensible, this can L, you see the way it's going to come from there, but why is the can... Let's see if we can just pick off that, and pick off that. This is where the auto routers normally really get stuff, they don't like it when you do a partial. Because they're ultra constrained when they start again. Yeah, I mean, if you're a company, though, it's not just if you're a company doing it and they audit you. The problem is if, if you're in a company and you're working on real projects um, and you've got no support because you're not paying that, and you're using a dodgy license, you're using a thing. What happens when it goes wrong and you can't deliver your customer's project because you've got hooky software? It's a, something that's really hard to explain to your customer something that's hard to explain to the cust the company you've stolen your software from um so yeah it's definitely a bad look let's see where it's screwed up ah i don't think they will sue you out of existence they won't they will, they will, they will make you pay your license that you failed to pay, and they'll make you back pay your support that you failed to pay. They've got no interest in suing you. It costs them money and costs their lawyers. Uh, it costs them money to pay lawyers. They're better off um, threatening you and getting you to pay what they think you owe them. And I'm pretty sure that's exactly what they'll do. It's not good business to cost money and pay out for things like lawyers. You're running a bath. I wish I could be having a bath right now instead of fighting this thing. I'm just going to go for broke now and just move these things just to totally. Maybe I could just get a smaller footprint of this. <laughs> I just want a footprint that just roots. Where's that IC? We've got an IC under here. Let's just, you know. Let's just go for it. Playing around, aren't we? That'd be kind of cool if you had an auto placer as well, where you say, I need the headers here and I need the USB port here, but everything else I don't actually care about where you... Um, lay it out. Hmm. 
96%. Let's just see one last, one last thing. Uh, let's see if I've got a library set up. Sometimes I have a higher performance DRU. Don't know where it would be right now. High spec. Okay, let's try auto routing it to a spec of a different manufacturer. Come on, Eagle. I wonder if there's any aftermarket uh, auto routers as well. Because I always think auto routing could be a totally separate package on things. It probably is with some things. Well, look at that. It did worse. All right, guys. I think I'm going to have to just call it a day right now. Come back to this later. Um, but before I do, I'll just show you the new thing, which is the Atari SD diagnostic cart. And I think V2, kindly laid out by our very own Electron Ash. Look at that, eh? And that will be the Atari Super Mega Cart. Um, and the import of this cart is it's important because once this card cart works for diagnostics use, which is why it's got the four layouts, um, it should be possible then for us to do all sorts of pro projects basically um, for the Atari ST um, based on this layout. So I'm using this not only as a, a debugger cart, which is a standard function that we can get chips for, but also that um, we can use projects and solder onto this and use it as a, as a backbone for other future projects to to interface to it and that's what that is so guys i think i'm going to call it a day i think the auto routing or routing of the other board is going to have to happen in due course but i'm going to try to get this um this board finished so we can actually just have a play with these and get these made so thanks everybody and see you tomorrow um, some new videos going to be edited soon, a couple of build videos, and uh, there's a whole load of other stuff I haven't started to video yet, so we'll work out how we're going to get through that. Literally about 40 things I have to video, and I don't even know where to start right now, but we'll just, we'll start with the electronic kits I built today. <laughs>